everyone, hope you're keeping well. I've currently got two kids home isolating, three still at school. So I'm just really hoping that the three remaining ones stay there. So let's pick up where we left off. So last week, Vayera ended with the very dramatic story of the Arcada, where Avram is about to sacrifice his beloved son Yitzchak. And luckily Hashem stops him just in time and he offers up a ram instead. Just after this, we were then told that Rifka was born. And then after that, Avram and Yitzchak set off home. So this week, Sedra, Chaye Sarah, starts off with the death of Sarah. And Rashi explains that the reason that this follows straight on from the Arcada is that actually the Satan came to Sarah, showed her an image of Yitzchak on the Arcada and pretended to her that he'd actually been killed and she died from the shock. So I'm going to do a quick summary of what happens next. Avram and Yitzchak, they get back and they find that Sarah's dead. Avram, of course, mourns and eventually he secures a good burial plot and he buries her. And then suddenly at that point, he decides it's really important that Yitzchak needs to get married now. And that it can't be anybody from Kana'an, but rather somebody from his own family, from his brother's family. So this is obviously quite a big deal, but rather than send Yitzchak himself or or for Avram to go himself. Instead, he entrusts it to Eliezer, his right-hand man. So Eliezer devises a test whereby the right girl for Yitzhak will be the one who also offers his camels a drink. He's waiting by a well, and Rivka comes along, and it proves she's the one, because why would anyone offer to feed his camels to drink? They can drink 200 litres of water in three minutes. Plus, she is the only three-year-old at the time. She's only three years old at the time. Any three-year-old who can go to the toilet by themselves, let alone go independently to schlep water from the village well, is an absolute keeper in my opinion. So then he asks who she is and it turns out she's Yitzchak's first cousin. Perfect! What more could a guy want from a wife than for her to be his first cousin? Now, if I was a guy buying a present for a three-year-old, I probably would have gone for maybe a dolly, maybe a colouring set. But no, he goes all out and he buys her a nose ring and bangles. So she offers him a place to stay and off she toddles home in her new DMs, freshly pierced nose to explain to her family she's going to go off with this nice stranger who she met at the well because she loves bangles and camels, of course. So over the course of the meal that they sit down to together, a medrash tells us that her father Basuel tries to poison Eliezer to put an end to the shidduch. But an angel thwarts his plans, swaps the balls round and actually it ends up being that Basuel dies. But they're not going to let the bad news stand in the way of a good shidduch offer. So despite only being three, and one of them, Forishman says she was actually scared of camels, so she was a bit reluctant to go. And she's just lost her father, who dramatically dropped dead during a family dinner. Off she goes. She says, no, it's okay. I'll just, I'll handle it. I can go. Don't worry. And at the other end, you'd expect that Avram, who's given these very detailed instructions to Eliezer of exactly who he's looking for for Yitzchak, you'd expect Avram to be there to greet them. But there's no mention of him at all. Instead, Yitzchak is there, and it's pretty much love at first sight. She falls off her camel as she sees him, and it was lucky that they fell in love after she slept all that way on her camel. And as he takes her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, the Pasuk says he feels comforted over the death of his mother, and he loves her, and he marries her. Now, the Medra says that three miracles came back that had occurred in Sarah's lifetime, and they'd stopped when she died. There was a cloud resting over her tent, her Shabbos candles, miraculously stayed lit from one Ere Shabbos to the next, and Hachala also stayed fresh all week. So when all these miracles returned, Yitzhak knew how special she was and he felt very comforted. And maybe they were there for each other because she'd actually also just lost her father. But where is Avram in this whole story? He doesn't really do much else, so he's not there when they get back. He's not there for any kind of big wedding celebration. All we hear about him now is that he marries a different woman called Keturah, who some say was Hagar, his former concubine. They have another six children who he sends off to live somewhere else and doesn't have much to do with them. And eventually he dies, aged 175, and Yitzchak and Shmuel bury him next to Sarah. So although he lives 38 years after Sarah died, he doesn't seem to do very much else, or not that we hear of. In fact, after the Arcada, Avram and Yitzchak never speak to each other again in the Pesukim and they seem to be living in different places to each other. Now, Avram is famous for his 10 tests that he went through, but as my good friend Debbie Stone pointed out in a share that I heard this week, 
Most of them were equally as challenging, if not more so, for Sarah, but he somehow gets all the credit. She also had to leave her home when they were told Lech Lecha. She also experienced famines. She was the one who was kidnapped twice. You know, we say Avram's wife was kidnapped twice, but she was actually the one who was kidnapped, not Avram. But we call it his test. She was an incredible woman and withstood every test with flying colours. And they were very much a team. Their hospitality, their teaching, they did everything together. But the final test was maybe the straw that broke the camel's back, as we're talking about camels a lot anyway. The shock of the Akeda literally killed her. And I don't think it was great for Avram Yitzhak either. If Yitzhak wasn't traumatised enough by having his father nearly shecht him, he gets back and finds his mother dead. And Avraham, feeling triumphant at having passed this final test of his, he's you know, got to number 10, and not only has he passed his test, but he's still got his beloved son alive, he gets home to realise that even though his son's alive, he's killed his wife instead. And then all this broken man has the energy for is to pass a torch to ensure that Yitzhak marries to continue what Avram, his father, started. So he sends Eliezer and to find a wife, and then that's it. We don't really hear from him again. Yitzchak, too, is very devastated by his loss, but he manages to move on when he finds Rivka, and he recognises her qualities. Now, it's really interesting to note that actually none of the Imahos met each other. Sarah had died before Rivka turned up, and when Rivka sends Yaakov away and he marries Rachel and Leah, She's died by the time he returns back home. And yet somehow, Rivka seems to embody Sarah, who she never met, but interestingly, their first cousins once removed. So perhaps it's not so surprising that they're similar. And likewise, Rachel and Leah were actually nieces of Rivka. So they're actually all very closely related, so it makes sense that they've got similar qualities. So what is this quality in them? I think it's all in the name, really. They are all our imahos, we call them our mothers. And as mothers, they will do anything for their children. And in fact, everything that they do do is for them. Sarah can put up with anything. She can pack up and move. She can deal with there being no food. There was a famine. She can withstand two kidnapping attempts. She even tells Avraham to take a concubine so that she could mother and bring up his child as she was barren. She's the dutiful wife throughout, but she absolutely puts her foot down when anything to do with Yitzhak is concerned. When Yishma'al is having a damaging effect on Yitzchak. Um, she sends him and Hagar away. And when finally she thinks that her only son, who all the brachas that Hashem showered them with, you know, she's promised throughout her life that she's going to have this amazing son and there's going to have nation through him and they're going to be the most amazing nation. She has to wait till 90 for that. And she thinks, you know, when she thinks he's died, that I think was one test too many for her. Rivka has to trick and lie to her husband and send away Yaakov never to see him again so that the lineage would continue. And Rachel allowed Leah and the two maidservants to marry Yaakov, the man she loved, so that all the Shavuotim would be born, not just her own children, because we need all of Klal Yisrael. And of course she died giving birth to Binyamin. Rav Soloveitchik points out that all of the others were very much dependent on their wives. Avram is a broken man without Sarah. Yitzchak doesn't recover from the death of his mother, so Rivka comes along. And Yaakov passes on the leadership to Yosef once Rachel dies. And if you think about it, the sedra that we call Chaye Sora, which means the life of Sora, is actually all about her son Yitzchak and what happens to him. Because that's really what life is for a Jewish mother or father or any Jewish adult, in fact. Yes, we're all busy with other things, but our main job in life is all about how we bring up and care for and educate our children. How we pass on our knowledge, our experience and our love to the next generation. Rabbi Sachs says Avram going quiet at the end of his life it's not out of neglect or that he'd given up but rather now that Yitzchak is settled he's found a wife he's ready Avram's ready to take a step back to allow him to forge his own path he hands over to him everything that he needs to know and then he lets him get on with it he allows him to become the next of the next patriarch and Rivka the next mother in Sarah's place Similarly, we don't hear much about Yitzchak and Rivka once Yaakov goes off to start his own family. We have to equip our children with everything they need to succeed and guide them, but also allow them the space to work it out on their own. I'd like to finish off by again quoting Rabbi Sachs, Zecher Sadik Racha, because of course he said it much better than I could. He said, We achieve greatness by handing our values on to the next generation 
and empowering them to go and build the future. Tomorrow's world is born in what we teach our children today. I hope that everyone has a very good week and a very good Chabas.